Hey everybody, Stippling Vaughn. Uh, you guys just saw I posted a video about uh, the Liberty Brigade and re it returning to Baltimore. And uh, it's still, I love that book. It's always it's, uh, been my favorite crowdfunder until somebody uh, dethrones it. But until then, uh, I decided to do a second video and that's just going over very quickly uh, the highlights of the signatures that I got while in Baltimore. Uh, Jerry Ordway, uh, I always, every single year when I go down there, he charges $2 a signature, so I always go down, I give him $20, and <clears throat> I get 10 books signed. Uh, one of the things I always do is, because All Star Squadrons, where I discovered him, it's one of my favorite books still, even after so many years, or so many decades, um, so I always go through and I pick out uh, five books, whether he did the whole story or whether he just did the cover, I pick out five books of All Star Squadron from the sign, then five other random uh, books or significant books to me for him to sign. Uh, this one, the reason why I wanted it to sign is uh, Mark Morales did the inks of it. Shane Davis did the pencil. Shane Davis talks a lot about this one, how uh, uh, this is how he met his wife because of a pan because of a specific page that's in this. Uh, that page has been destroyed. Shane destroyed all of his pages. So the only pages of this book that are available are the pages that were uh, handed to uh, Mark Morales. So I thought that was very interesting. So I wanted to get him to sign uh, this book. Uh, with all the talk going on about uh, Batman and uh, Ezra Miller and Michael Keaton as an old Batman and everything, uh, a lot of people were talking about Batman Beyond. And I thought uh, this story done by Sean Chen uh, would have been an ideal uh, Batman Beyond script. Uh, what would have been great was you could have had Michael Keaton. Something happens where he's in the where he's in a hospital. Terry's out fighting the bad guys, and here's the melodical villain. He sends his minions to go attack him, and out of the shadows they get all get bit, beaten up. And out of the shadows walks Linda Carter as Wonder Woman. I thought that would have been awesome. That would have been a great way to have Michael Keaton as an old Batman and Linda Carter as a Wonder Woman. So I wanted him to sign this uh, <clears throat> because I thought that would have made a great script. Plus also, uh, I'm a I am a big fan of Sean Chen's work. Uh, I had Jerry sign this one also because, believe it or not, he did do work on it. He did a panel, or actually technically half a panel, for this book. So he is a creator on this book, so I had to have him sign it. Jer uh, <clears throat> Jose Luis Garcia Lopez, love seeing him. Uh, this was one of those books when I've, I've known for the last like three years of uh, him doing the cover to this book. Uh, literally just before uh, the show started, uh, I had the opportunity to buy, this is a beat up reader copy. Uh, spines all beat up. Page, the corners are folded. I think even when the interior pages is is uh, is uh, torn halfway up, but I don't care. Uh, I got it because I wanted the uh, cover, and uh, so I had him sign it. And then of course I had him also sign these. These three, okay, they are. What this is is that this is a small comic that came in a cereal box. So the comic book came in the cereal box and it came in a cellophane bag. He's kept protected from the cereal. But I thought that was really cool. And <laughs> Batman brand sweetened cereal. <laughs> so yeah, I he did the covers for these. Uh, I had had him sign my five books. Uh, I think it was like Friday. And then we were just about ready to head out or in Sunday. Saw he didn't really have anybody there, so I walked up and asked him if he could sign these three covers, which he gladly did. Um, but yeah, always always go see Jose when you're at a show. It's, it's uh, great to see him. Uh, when I found out Ron Garney was going to be there, I immediately thought of this book and uh, how what I love about this story is uh, Joseph Loeb did uh, throughout the story, he has FDR's speech of us entering the uh, World War II. Um, I was hell-bent that, oh yeah, I've got to have him sign this one. Uh, then I found out that he's charging $10 a signature and almost choked. Um, but I had him sign it, but other than this one, one other book, it was like, okay, but I'm not going to have him sign it anymore. 
uh, another Jerry Ordway. Uh, this was a great one. Uh, he, him and I were talking about this one. Here, what it was is this is a uh, he. Remember, he used to work at a bar. I don't know. I'm sorry. His mother owned a bar, so he uh, lived, I think, upstairs of it. So uh, he's well familiar with uh, 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 civil, uh, veterans of World War II uh, who were uh, patrons of the bar. Um, there were those that did talk and those that didn't. And uh, those that didn't, there, was a, there were reasons why. And there were certain soldiers uh, who served during the bulge who uh, they just don't talk about it. Um, but no, I thought he, he did a great job. And I thought this was a great story uh, that, Jer that, uh, that uh, Jurgens wrote. And so uh, I'm glad that uh, Jerry was given the opportunity to uh, illustrate it. So hence the reason why I had to have him sign, sign this one. Uh, Anne was there for the first time. And so I got her to sign this issue of Daredevil. I like this one because uh, here throughout the book, <laughs> he's getting beat up by all of his different villains. And it's like, just as he deal, gets done dealing with another one, another villain atta uh, attacks him. And just page after, it's just, all it is is, it's just one long fight, pretty much through the whole issue, until he's literally helpless. And then uh, uh, Typhoid Mary uh, pushes him off a bridge at the very end. Fabian was there. Fabian was great. He was uh, had a promotion. Normally, Fabian charges uh, like five, ten dollars if you're going to sign a Mar a, a, a X Men or a Deadpool or an X Force or a Cable, any of those type of books, uh, basically involving Cable, Deadpool, or the X Force. He charges you uh, uh, five to ten dollars or even higher. Uh, for this, because he was brought in specifically for the Heroes Initiative, he was charging you a dollar for in, for for whatever you have, have him sign. So I had him uh, when the first day I saw him. Definitely wanted to sign this. When I remember when this book came out, loved the design of uh, the bangle, and uh, so I had to have him sign this one. And again, so because it was only a dollar signature, took advantage to have him sign Deadpool. Mark Schultz. Mark Schultz is always there at the Flask Publications booth. Um, here, I looked at this one and I realized uh, during the pandemic uh, that this was a Mark Schultz cover, so I had to have that one set aside for him to sign. Uh, he said that he always wanted to do the Fantastic Four. Uh, this was his one opportunity to do it, even though it's not the Fantastic Four. four uh, it was close to it, so he had the opportunity. Again, had Fabian sign this one. This one apparently was uh, great significance to him because he was in L.A. during the L.A. riots. And uh, so if you have him sign this book, uh, ask him about it, and he'll tell you the whole story, how they'd gone out, and they had gone out to have dinner. I think they had dinner with Stan Lee, and then they were worried about getting, getting Stan Lee home in time because of all the barricades, and then they were worried about getting home uh, getting hooked back to their hotel. They got back to their hotel and there's barricades uh, by the National Guard in front of their hotel. Uh, and then they end up go upstairs to the uh, penthouse, to the top of the building to look out over the city and watching everything burn. And apparently there are a bunch of Brits in the hot tub uh, getting drunk out of their minds going, it is the end of the world. <laughs> so, <laughs> very interesting. But this was a poignant story for him because of it happening while he was in the city or while he was in LA while it was happening and then we also have another one he did which was uh, Nomad which is uh, him fighting Red Wolf uh, Fabian did a couple of stories with Red Wolf to try and reinvigorate him I enjoyed it and that's the reason why I wanted uh, him to sign this one uh, Terry Kaufman he did this one and I remember or and I remember talking when I set this in front of him, I said it when he says basically it's like a two issue what if story. And he said, Yeah, that's how he treated it. And uh, it was again great work, uh, great story. Uh, loved uh, Carlos's artwork in it. Uh, hope that uh, things are getting better for him 
with him having the spinal issues, all of a sudden he's announced that he's having. Then you have Super Soldiers, again by Fabian. Uh, love the artwork on this, enjoyed the story. So, of course, I had to use the opportunity to get him to sign it. Jose had never seen this book. He'd known he'd done the artwork for Graham, but he'd never seen it. He didn't know it was made into a comic book. He just thought it was a, uh, like a splash illustration. But uh, so he was a joy. it was nice to see him have given him the opportunity to see this book and for him to first see it through me from me. So, but he he was very surprised. So they actually turned into a cover. Mark Morales was an, was an assistant to Joe Rubenstein when this issue came out. Joe didn't want to do all the chains, so Mark had to do all the chains on this one. Now the fun thing about this whole thing is that. Um, uh, he was just an inking assistant, but yet he's giving credit in this book. Not a lot of people who are assistants get the credit that they deserve. And so I thought it was really nice that he got the credit uh, when he was just an inking assistant. Joe St. Pierre <clears throat> did this, and the reason why I wanted him to sign it was uh, on his Facebook page, he posted photographs that he'd taken of people in different poses to get this cut to do this cover. So I thought it was really important. I were not important, but I thought I, that's the reason why I wanted him to sign this this specific book was because I wanted uh, because of the photo reference he used that he shared to show how he made, got the cover done. This is the only issue of G.I. Joe that Lee Weeks ever actually did. He did a lot of covers, but he only did one issue. And uh, I did ask him about, and he, he stated uh, that he would have loved to do more G.I. Joe. I made a reference to uh, he ha may have the opportunity uh, in the future because of uh, if if it gets renewed and if it goes over to what people are saying it's going over to Skydance or Skyborn uh, he said only if Larry Hama is the writer he said he will only do G.I. Joe if Larry Hama is the writer and I agree with him uh, I think uh, Larry does a very good job of telling the story uh, and keeping the action in the story yes I spent some money on this one Al Milgram charges ten dollars a signature. Bob McLoy charges five dollars a signature. Um, it, you could say I paid too much, but it's Star Wars. It's issue seventeen of the original Marvel run, and I don't have any issues signed by Al. I don't have. And I only have a few signed by Bob. So I looked at that, and uh, because I am a big fan of Star Wars, Star I was into Star Wars long before I was into uh, uh, superheroes. Uh, for me, it was well worth it. And then, second to last, we have Dark Force Rising. Uh, he, before the pandemic, Kevin Nolan was at the show, and I got him to sign it. So this year, I had Terry Moore sign some of the issues. So it was just very nice to have him sign. And I always, like I said, I, for me, it's one of those where it's like, if there's no debate over what someone should sign if they've done Star Wars and they have to sign Star Wars. And then this one, uh, Louise Simonson, she ha was the editor. Uh, Brett Blevins was the penciler. This was Anne's Nakati's first issue that she wrote. So I had, so that was one that we definitely wanted her to sign. And then lastly, this one. This one's significant to me because um, now that she signed this one, she signed quite a few other Star Wars after this issue. Now, um, from like basically 87, 97 through 106, every single one has been signed uh, because she was the editor at that time. Uh, Star Wars is the only book where I will uh, ha a, where I want a editor to sign. Uh, with a lot of other books, uh, I don't want them to sign it. But this is, if it's Star Wars or if it's G.I. Joe, if it's an editor, 
it's like, yeah, I do want you to sign because those are my two favorite stories. So having her sign these, and so now I've got uh, just added to the collection of signed Star Wars books, uh, which is always, I'm always looking for how it can grow. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, remember, life is stressful, and that's why you take it all one die at a time.